One day, Jesus and his friends, whom he called disciples, went through a field on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the weekly Jewish holiday, and people are not supposed to work on that day. Instead, they would gather, celebrate, and listen to the writings of the Holy Scriptures. Some of the religious leaders saw that the disciples were taking some corn from the field to eat, as they were hungry. They confronted Jesus, saying, It is illegal to work on the Sabbath. How, then, can your disciples harvest crops today? Do you remember the old story of our former King David? Before he became king, he was in a bad situation and had to hide inside a house that belonged to God. And as he was inside that house, which he was not supposed to be in because it was a holy place, he did even worse. He and his companions were hungry and ate the bread that was offered to God and was not allowed to be eaten either. Was God angry with them? Did he punish or even confront them for doing so? No. Jesus concluded, God made the Sabbath for people to celebrate and be happy about their free day, not to make life more difficult for them. Jesus was in the synagogue. This is a building similar to our churches today. It was the Sabbath, a weekly Jewish day of rest. No one works on this day. Instead, people gather to learn about God. Some people who did not like Jesus and were searching for a reason to accuse him brought a man to Jesus. This man had a shriveled hand, and they asked Jesus, Is it allowed to heal on the Sabbath? Jesus knew that they were trying to accuse him of healing the man because according to their law, this was not allowed. So, he asked them, What if one of your sheep falls into a pit on the Sabbath? Do you leave it down there for the day? No! You get it out even though it is work and is not allowed. This man is worth way more than a sheep. He then turned towards the man. Stretch out your hand. In that moment, it was healed and was able to be used again. The people trying to accuse him were so angry from what he did that they planned to kill Jesus. Jesus withdrew from the crowd, healing the sick and asking them to keep quiet about him. This fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy about a gentle servant who would bring justice and hope to the nations. Jesus often freed people from evil spirits. Some people accused him of this, you can only drive out these spirits because you have a much stronger evil spirit within you that they have to obey. If evil spirits drove out other evil spirits, what would that achieve? It's like leaders of a country fighting each other. That can't last long. Eventually, they have to work together or their whole country won't work and will eventually fall apart. No, only God himself has the power to drive out these spirits, and I get this power from him. Jesus tells the Pharisees that no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah, who is in the fish for three days, as Jesus will be in the earth. He warns that the people of Nineveh and the Queen of the South will condemn this generation for not repenting, as they recognized God's message when it came to them. Jesus also explains that a person who is freed from an evil spirit but does not fill their life with good will end up worse off, just as this generation will. One day, Jesus was teaching a group of people about God. His mother and his brothers came to the house that he was in. They had heard about the things he was doing and saying. They thought he was going crazy and they wanted to stop him. One of the friends of Jesus, who he called disciples, informed Jesus that his siblings and his mother were waiting outside. Jesus responded, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Aren't they the people who listen to God's words and follow him? You are my family, because you trust in God. 